Hi, I'm James Minnick of Minnick Law, and today we're going to talk about some common misconceptions related uh, to driving while impaired. The first misconception that I'm going to talk about is uh, uh, that the only reason that somebody could be charged with driving while impaired would be that they're under the influence of alcohol. Uh, that's not the case. A, a person could be charged with impaired driving related to uh, illegal substances such as marijuana, but uh, also related to prescription medications. Uh, the second uh, misconception that I'm going to talk about is that uh, uh, you know a DWI can only occur for somebody that is driving a vehicle. That is true, but it's kind of the concern of what is a vehicle in North Carolina. In North Carolina, a bicycle is considered a motor vehicle for purposes of the driving while impaired statute. Misconception number three is that I can't be charged with an impaired driving offense if I blow less than a .08 at the uh, jail. Um, uh, the, the person could be charged with uh, driving while impaired if the officer uh, finds that there is a .08 or greater blood or breath reading or if the state believes uh, in relation to an alcohol DWI that they can show that the person was appreciably impaired by alcohol. Fourth misconception is uh, related to a uh, refusal. And again, this would be the situation where, uh, again, there was no chemical test whatsoever given uh, to the, uh, the, to the uh, state. The person did not comply with a breath test. There was no blood test collected. Uh, therefore, the state can't show that I'm impaired. A refusal of a blood or a breath test in and of itself can be used as evidence of guilt in an impaired driving charge. Another misconception is that I can't be charged with impaired driving if nobody saw me driving. And this uh, is not the, the case. If the state can show by other means, whether it's the person's own admissions uh, or other evidence that the person uh, was driving the vehicle, circumstantial or direct evidence of driving, the state can still proceed forward with uh, the DWI charge. The sixth misconception uh, that I'm going to talk about related to driving while impaired is uh, what if I'm just parked in a parking lot. Uh, it does not matter if the car is in park as long as the engine is engaged. Uh, misconception number seven, a um, uh, person's license can't be revoked if they are acquitted of the charge. So if a person is found not guilty or the charge, the underlying uh, DWI is dismissed, uh, my license can't be revoked. That is not the case. If a person refuses a chemical test, uh, then their license can be revoked for a minimum of one year, but greater than that if the uh, DMV confirms the refusal revocation uh, and that uh, decision is not overturned. The uh, eighth misconception or, or just kind of a misunderstanding of uh, DWI is kind of how long will it take me to get to trial. This can vary greatly on the, the misdemeanor offense of driving while impaired depending on any number of circumstances, but particularly if there was a blood result uh, that was taken uh, at the jail. The ninth misconception that we're going to talk about is that the officer did not see any bad driving. Can't pull me over, didn't see any bad driving. Uh, this is a misconception because there are a number of situations in which uh, the person that is driving normally could be pulled over. One of those would apply if the person's tag is uh, expired. So it, there was no bad driving, I wasn't uh, weaving, uh, there was no speeding. Uh, if the person's tag is uh, expired, if the uh, registered owner of the vehicle's license is revoked, even if it's not the driver, if, if you're uh, driving a friend's car, the, the, the friend's license is revoked, and that shows then an officer could potentially pull the vehicle over because of the fact that the registered owner of the vehicle's license is showing as uh, revoked and it can kind of do a license check at that point. The tenth misconception related to DWIs that I'm going to talk about, and this is our final point, is that uh, uh, I was not arrested. I was charged with the DWI, but I was not arrested. Shouldn't I have had to been arrested in order to be, um, uh, you know, for my case to go to trial because of the fact that this is an impaired driving offense? It's not necessary for a person uh, to be arrested for impaired driving. An officer uh, investigating someone for impaired driving need not arrest that person. Typically, uh, one of the primary reasons for an arrest of an impaired driver is so that a, a chemical analysis can be done of the person's breath or blood uh, at either a jail or a hospital. Uh, but that is not a necessary uh, uh, result of a DWI investigation. Mm -hmm.